Happy New Year, everybody. I am mining investor and editor of Resource Stock Digest, Gerardo Del Real, here with my partner, Senor Nicolas Hodge, who is also an investor and the publisher of Daily Profit Cycle. It's great to be back with you all. This is the 251st episode of our weekly therapy session that we like to call Investing in Bizarro World. We're going to talk markets. We're going to talk gold. We're going to talk uranium. We're going to talk utilities. Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, which I'm really excited to get to. We're going to get into a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things. Um, have to touch on Mr. Epstein, but before we get to that, sicko, Mr. Hotch, how are you today, sir? It's good to have, good to be back on here. It's good to have you back. I held it down um, last week alone about private placements, which was. Um, good, because I actually needed to make a video about private placements anyway. I hope people got to to see that. We do have a, a private placement service that we recently uh, renamed and re rebranded, and we've done a couple of deals um, since then. It's called uh, Private Placement Intel. So there's that. Uh, the new year was good. The kids are back in school, and I'm glad to get back to it as well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, the new year was amazing. Everyone's healthy. The wife keeps getting prettier and she still loves me. The kids are healthy. Um, it's good to get back in the gym. Good to get back in the routine and the swing of things and looking forward to what I think is going to be a really, really profitable 2024. Right. I'm excited for the year. Um, and then and, and yeah. And look, I, I, I mentioned Epstein and we have to start there. Right. We're starting to get um, the list. Of, of um, some of the names of the people that frequented, um, you know, the child rapist's island, and you know, I I gotta ask you, Nick, like, how how do you like your pedophiles? Like, do you, jail, do you have a do, do you have a preference? Well, first, did not I would like them to be non-existent, <laughs> and then after that, I guess imprisoned is how I like them. Yeah, Why? I, I, uh, oh, because apparently, um, the the story isn't the fact that you know very powerful men and women. We're flying underage um, victims, girls to an island and raping them at will for many, many, many years and decades. That apparently isn't um, the, the story. The story is, you know, did did the pedophiles, did they belong to the Republican Party or did they belong to the Democrats? Right. And it it kind of saddens me, Nick. It's a horrific enough story and it's a tragic enough story for all of the victims involved, right? It saddens me that the discourse for any segment of our population is even around which party actually committed some of these atrocities and not on, I don't care who committed the atrocities, put those fuckers under the prison, right? I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if your name's Donald Trump. I don't care if you're, you know, Stephen Hawking. I don't care if you're, Bill Clinton, whoever you are, if you committed any of this nasty stuff, you deserve to be under the prison. And so, um, yeah, hence the question, how do you like your pedophiles? Because apparently for some people, as long as um, they're Democrats or Republicans on that list, then we only focus on the other side and we don't actually focus on the story that is a tragic story that is. Um, I've told you. Happy New that Year. <laughs> I told you before that, you know, Dostoevsky was writing about this um, in novels, uh, you know, that he put out hundreds of, of years ago when, you know, uh, Russia was undergoing turmoil and he would write about trials. And ultimately, the thing that would get put on trial was not the atrocity or not the breaking of the law, but, you know, how the evidence was discovered. Was that done in like a kosher manner? Right. Or right. And what were their political um, associations or, or allies, uh, but not the actual matter at hand. And so. Um, in that sense, there's there's nothing new under the sun. Um, and and, and in, in other senses, I guess there's nothing new under the sun because, you know, these are names that, you know, we've known for a long time. Epstein, sure. Um, as a thing, as a as a, you know, rapist that got swept under the rug, that was like back in 2008. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, do the math there. And we're in 2024 now. And so and we've heard the Clintons and we've heard the. Um, you know, Israeli prime ministers, et cetera. And the names just keep coming out. And so that's one thing I guess I wanted to mention is, is how deep this is, um, yeah, how in the mainstream it is now, right? Because I saw like Aaron Rodgers was lobbing insults at Jimmy Kimmel, who was like apparently like tied up in this now or somehow. And I don't know all the details, so I didn't want to get into the individual names. 
Um, and I, I don't care how the pedophiles come on either side because you know me and I, I'm an independent. But God, these are the points I wanted to make is that, of course, it gets politicized because of where we are in the cycle of, of political turnings and in political discourse, right? Where um, obviously in a fourth turning and I'm getting very deep into the book now, Gerardo. In fact, I'm closer to the uh, epilogue than the prologue. And so I need um, to catch up. I, I can talk a little bit more uh, about that. But and one of the things that happens is you get very tribal or the populace, let's say, gets very sure. tribal because I like to think I'm viewing it from the outside as someone um, sure. aware of, of, of what's going on. So and you get dry, tribal because there's so much at stake. Right. So just think about January 6th or the last election. And it's going to be the same thing for the next couple of elections, because yeah, you think that if your side loses, um, then you lose everything. Right. Uh, because whoever wins is going to decide uh, the direction for the next however long. So, um, of course, it gets politicized, but even more than that and how it relates to the fourth turning is and I wanted to relate to how it related to how it speaks to the 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 rottenness of our institutions. Right. You talk about how do you like them on on Republican or Democrat? Well, the fact that they're on both sides to me speaks to just how rotten the institutions are and not just the the political institutions. Right. I mean, um, we're talking um, other countries, we're talking um, executives, we're talking uh, billionaires, uh, tech people, um, and, and new facts just continue to come out, or at least new to me. Like, um, I didn't know that at one point Mr. Epstein was listed as like a co-founder of the um, the Clinton Global Initiative, for example, and uh, it's no wonder that, you know, that Melinda and, and Bill are no longer married. So, yeah, this thing is rotten and, and it stinks, and... Um, to me, it's, it seems like we're almost hamster wheeling it, right? Like I see all the same names, like it's out in the open now, right? Now, we've, I think what people want is some um, some action, right? Some closure. And you hear that, yeah. you know, the lady who had the, the book with the, all the names, she threw it in a bonfire and in a fit of rage. And so that, you know, her list went poof. And it's like, at what point are we going to actually get some accountability? And, and I guess those are most of my thoughts about it and the list yeah. that I made there. No, and I think it's worth mentioning, you know, um, th there were a lot of financial institutions that have settled with victims out of court for knowingly funneling the cash that was facilitating the rape of young kids. Keep that in mind when we talk about institutions and how this couldn't have been done in a vacuum where nobody knew. It, it's, it's, it's just nasty and disgusting stuff. Um, so well, clearly, out. and so yeah. Anyway, he. I mean, yeah. I, I read today that he had an office at, at Harvard for like years after that, you know, 2008 child rape case in Florida, for example. And so people knew for sure, and people still knew, and now everyone knows. And, and that's sort of what I was saying. It's like everyone knows. And, um, it seems like the we just keep going on normally. Yeah. In fairness to Mr. Kimmel, because you brought his name up, he he retorted saying, I saw. <laughs> dear asshole, I have never interacted with, been on a plane with, known, spoken to, anything Epstein. If that conversation keeps happening and involving my name, I'm going right. to sue your ass. Don't yeah. play with me. You're putting my family in danger. So Jimmy was not on the logs. He's not on the list. He wasn't on the plane, according to Jimmy. So shoot him a little grace on that, because that's definitely not the kind of jacket anybody wants to wear if it's not a jacket they should own um let's bring it back where we normally start let's talk markets we are in 2024 we have a gold price that closed you know right around the 2050 2060 level trading around the 2043 level chartist nick what are the uh what are the technicals telling you i've i've you know i'm more of a narrative and trend guy and i've said that i think Everything's lining up beautifully for new all-time highs, especially in the second half of this year as it relates to gold. Some of that will be dollar-driven, some of that obviously as a result of policy changes. But what do you see in the near term? Because you're really good with those charts and I am really not. <laughs> um, I'm happy to talk about it, but I, you broke up. And so are you, you were asking about gold technicals? Or yes, 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 yes. Go, go, gold technicals. Um, talked about the levels that yep. are closed at for the year and kind of what do you see yep. here in the short term? You, well, you got above 2000 finally to close out a year, which was uh, 2023. And, and that was wonderful. Um, it's continued to show strength since then. Um, uh, and once to consolidate, it looks like now around 2050. So um, 
earlier this week or, you know, again, last week when you uh, will have, would have watched this podcast, you had it up around 2070 or 2080. Um, and even when it pulls back now, it wants to do so to the sort of 2040 or, or 2050 level. And so technically it looks good. Uh, next like higher, you're going to have to recapture the highs that it made in, in December, but um, you don't have to be in a hurry. I mean, if it can digest gains at, at 2050 and, and put a base in there, I mean, um, that's a, a really good place to be heading into a new year, especially because of, of what I'm going to say next. Um, the Fed has finally backed itself into a corner, right? It talked mm. about being done raising rates in, in December. Um, and, and lo and behold, in the past couple of days, what do we hear? Oh, maybe we're not done raising rates or maybe they're going to stay higher for longer. Well, and what I've been saying is that the fact is they are going to remain higher for longer because inflation is going to remain sticky high for longer. Um, and, 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 and unless the economy gets really bad, um, they're, they're not going to have the cover to um, cut. So you've got sort of gold sitting in the catbird seat, right? Um, you've had rates come down a little bit, which gave buoyancy to gold. You've had um, geopolitical um, tensions, which uh, continue, which gave buoyancy to gold. And, and now you've got the Fed sort of with a, a sort of self-imposed cap on rates, which is good Blah. for gold. And um, uh, what else did I want to say? I mean, we, it, gold is consolidating higher even with the dollar. So I know yes. it's been a couple of weeks since you and I were together. Um, we talked about the dollar going down to 100. And what did I tell you? The rumors of its death were, were greatly exaggerated. And it's yep. back up to around um, 102. And, uh, and gold is consolidating higher while it's doing that. So uh, technically looks good. Fundamentally, it, it looks good. Central banks continue to buy um, a lot to like in the gold space. And um, you got a, a pullback in the gold equities, which I think is, is, is worth buying as well, I would say. And so I've done that a little bit, both on the larger and smaller end of the of the spectrum um i agree on all your points um it's going to be an interesting first half of the year really excited for the second half of the year and for those of you that haven't positioned yourselves um with, with you know good long gold positions this is probably going to be the last order or two where you're going to be able to do that at these levels because i think the second half of the year stocks gold stocks are going to be on absolute fire so i'd get that done got gotta mention private placements you held it down you did a great job um with the video we had some nice emails and some uh subscribers that wrote in about that episode but we actually are live with one right now and it's one that i'm excited to participate in i know that you're a shareholder um it's one that we're offering to subscribers should we should we mention it on on on, on air or should we leave it alone um <laughs> sure so it's a uh, mind hub technologies, which we've talked about in the past, right? And this company traded as high as 45, 46 cents, sold off at the rest of uh, the space, mostly um, here in late 2023, doing a financing at 11 cents, a very attractive full warrant. I believe that full warrant is at 20 cents, if I'm not mistaken, Nick. And so for three years, for 36 months, I'm working off a memory here, but that is as attractive a financing for a company that has what Warren Buffett likes to describe as a significant moat, meaning there is no one in the world that is doing what MindHub Technologies is doing with the type of partners and the caliber of partners that they're doing it with. So much so that you have the world's biggest mining companies putting up their own money to expedite the digital platform. And for those of you not aware, what MindHub Technologies does is it's digitizing, starting by digitizing the commodity supply chain, right? And so, you know, we had a conversation with the executive chairman and it was fascinating to me. I'm asking him the simple questions because I'm a simple guy. Well, how do they keep track of stuff now? And he says, Gerardo, you wouldn't believe it. If you're buying, you know, a container ship worth of whatever, let's say iron ore, um, you still have to fax and you still have to wire and you still have to put the order in. And yeah, sure, they'll track the container on a you know, port by port basis, but it's not in real time. And so, you know, this is how you end up with gold bars that are really molybdenum and not gold. And this is how you end up with, you know, containers that disappear. And so what this company is doing is 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 basically the future, right? It's digitizing and starting with commodities, but eventually I know they have ambitions to do this across the globe for a lot of different sectors. And, you know, anytime you have the Cadelcos of the world, the Sumitomos of the world, 
paying you to actually do this. Um, no strings attached other than this is beneficial to our business. You know, that's a heck of an endorsement. And if those people who are way smarter than I believe that this is the future of tracking and digitizing the commodity supply chain, I'm willing to write another check for that. So um, I say all that to say I haven't sold a share from the first place, but I don't plan on selling any of these anytime soon. And I think we're going to do really, really well with the position. Yeah, it's a deal I've watched for a long time. And our mentor would say that it's my fault that we're, you know, in it now because I, you know, have liked it for a while and there was an opportunity to finance it in 2023. So the technology is, is, you know, best in class. It comes out of IBM. It was it developed with partners like Wheaton, which is one of the largest royalty resource, uh, resource royalty companies in the world. Um, you mentioned Kodelco and Sumitomo. You mentioned the the how it's currently tracked. I was going to mention the emissions. So the way I oh. sort of frame it up is, um, do you know what a Monroni sticker is? I did not know what a Monroni sticker is. I so, am not you know, cultured enough, Mr. Hodge. You know neither. this. So when you go and buy a car, there's a sticker on the window. That's a Monroni sticker. It tells you how much the car costs, the MSRP, the miles per gallon, all that information, safety ratings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think, and I've said this for a while, that in the future, those will have like, where the uh, battery materials came from, like what the life of the expected battery is, charge times, range, but also, um, you know, carbon emission information. And yep. uh, I've even gone so far as to say that there'll be tiers like, um, and we're actually, we're going this way already. So I'm going to make a good point here. Like you'll have the A tier, the B tier and the C tier where the A tier was all like not child labor cobalt, for example, in your battery. And then <laughs> the C tier, you get child labor cobalt, for example. Um, and we're already we're already seeing that. So I'm sorry to make light, but the fact that they have to tell us tells you how bad it is out there, right? Right. It's so hard being a kid nowadays. Yeah. Where am I going with this? Oh, and also the emissions. It's going to say, you know, what were the emissions that were um, uh, produced in mining the sources of, of materials for this battery? So, and in some ways, we're already going there. Like the Inflation Reduction Act get granted tax incentives for electric vehicles. But only if the materials in those batteries um, and vehicles came from, you know, certain places and were produced in certain ways. So all this stuff is going to have to be tracked going forward. Um, and there's not a great way to do that. So um, MineHub does provide that. Like you said, the, the largest copper company in the world has already signed up to use them as a solution for that. There's other very big companies involved. Um, I will say, though, that. Um, the, you know, it was on the equity side of things, it was a bit of a stumble in 2023 because they needed to raise more capital to get sure. to, um, profitability and to, to ultimately harness that growth. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we became involved. We provided some of that capital, um, but then they needed more. And you know what happens as the year progressed. And so it ended up <laughs> now having to be raised at lower prices. But I tell all that to say to you, dear reader, that um, you're financing it here at 52 week lows. You can buy shares in the open market at the same price that they're being uh, sold in the financing, and um, they're going to get rolled back two for one. So you get uh, you can start off with a clean structure. Um, I don't know what the number is going to be off the top of my head, but um, certainly uh, fifty percent less shares than are out now if they're rolling back two for one. Um, and yeah, I think those are all the thoughts of mine. Now, I'm a shareholder, obviously, uh, we're, we're biased, so um, I think it's a good opportunity, and um, I think there's a real need for what they provide. I agree. That's your uh, money's worth here for the day, everybody, for dealing with my rantings and ravings. Um, U.S. dollar, uh, should, you know, just quick take. We kind of touched on it a little bit with gold. I think you see weakness like I see weakness, especially in the second half of the year. Uh, near term, what does that look like? It bounced off that 100 level really nicely. Yeah. So what happened is we just rewind, right? Because we're coming out of that post-holiday malaise where we forgot what happened for the past couple of weeks. So uh, Jerome spoke in the middle of December. Um, the the market thought, you know, he said, we're done raising rates. Uh, rates went down. Um, dollar went down. They took it to mean that easing was party time. Um, hmm. Markets ran to near all time highs heading into the end of the year. Um, and then the calendar flipped and the market was like, oh, shit. Um, maybe uh, we're, uh, they're not going to, to cut rates as soon as we think. And the rates and the dollar started to go back up. So. Um, that's where you're at. The dollar bounced off the hundred level, as you said, it firmed back up to 102. Um, the rates pulled back up a little bit, and I guess just for a little bit more context on rates, the yield curve is still inverted. Um, I think the two year is saying you don't expect a cut as soon as you think, and I think the ten year is saying um, 
I'm still going to stay below the two year because um, I, I'm not real confident about growth. So yeah, I think that's that's where we're at. I don't think a lot's changed um, the, despite the celebrations of the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Now, speaking of celebrations, got to mention uranium, right? Here we are at a 16 year high, broke the $92 a pound level. I said at 70 that if it broke through that, it was going to get to 100 really quick. It's, it's headed there really, really quick. And um, I really like the setup for the uranium equities. Because although most are near 52-week highs, most aren't at 52-week highs despite the 20-something dollar surge in the spot price. Now, look, you can make the argument that a lot of these companies are explorers and don't actually have any uranium, but it's also applicable to the producing companies, right? And so I think there's a heck of an opportunity there. I'm writing about it in Junior Resource Monthly today. Um, that'll be out early next week. Um, we just financed the uranium deal that I also wrote a check for. Um, a lot to like. I think it's going to be a heck of a 2024. And I'm starting to think my $200 a pound prediction um, might prove conservative. You know, I, I, I thought it would overshoot to 200 before pulling back and settling. But man, the stars are aligning just all around the world with on the demand part of the supply demand um, uh, proposition. And when I look at the supply that exists and when I look at, you know, the, the land time that it takes, uh, to secure supply, we might be in for a good three, four, five year bull run in the uranium price that overshoots to 250, 300 a pound. And if had a hit, if that's half true, if we get to 150, 200, anything with the word uranium is going to fly, right? We're going to be in Vancouver here in a couple of weeks at the resource investment conference. And if it goes the way I think it's going to go this year for uranium, um, next year, there's probably going to be a whole ton of uranium exhibitors that'll be there, right? All the new companies, all the venture capitalists will have a new uranium deal. I'm sure we'll be looking through deals every single day the way it happens during a bull market. I welcome all of that. Get positioned in the uranium space. I hope y'all are picking up a trend. Gold, uranium. It's going to be a fun year, folks. Um, a lot of thoughts there as well. So um, let me let me start not with uranium. Let me start with a silver and copper. A couple of weeks ago, you asked me, is, is mm. silver a precious metal or is silver an industrial metal? And I, I believe I told you silver was an industrial metal. Um, and all it's done since then is uh, go down 8 to 10% while uh, gold has remained strong. So why do I say that? Um, I say that because uh, I'm going to talk about copper next. Um, which got, again, close to $4, but again, um, failed to break out. And so um, what I'm telling you is that it, commodities in general, um, let me set the full stage, are in a super cycle that began in 2020, but they're in a pullback broadly within that super cycle because of the slow economic growth that's about to materialize. So within that pullback in a super cycle, uranium is an outlier because it's one mm. of the few commodities um, that are going up um, and up precipitously, as you just outlined. So um, now uh, the highest uh, it, it's been at $92, like you said, since uh, yep. December of 2007. Um, and the equities have actually pulled back. So uh, I was looking at the ETF earlier because I was writing about it for the, the weekly issue of Hodge Family Office. And um, I, I didn't use the Sprott ETF because it hasn't been around as long. I was using the URA ETF. And if you look back five years, um, which gets you the full context breadth of this you know bull market uh, takeoff of uranium um that etf kept pace pretty well with the, the sure. price of uranium uh, until recently and then in, now you've got a divergence with this which is worth um taking advantage of which leads me to the the, the next thing i wanted to say uh, a couple of weeks ago we were also talking about uranium and i was telling you people were asking on a call that i was having you know why are these stocks pulling back um, and I told you that they're gaining energy for the next like higher. I said what you just said. Yeah, I see some of these stocks like near 52 week highs, but not wanting to uh, break out. And so uh, with uranium prices at ninety two dollars and with a, a pullback broadly in the equities, um, it's time to deploy capital. And and, and that leads me to the, the last thing I wanted to say, which relates to something you asked me about and even a few weeks ago, perhaps even as far back as the New Orleans conference. And um, that's about, you know, being inside of a bull market, right? And um, knowing where you are, because for, for so long, we anticipated this bull market, right? And now, like, um, you're inside of it. So you've got companies being acquired, you've got assets being spun out, um, you've got, you know, drill programs that you have to respond to. And so 
um, you have to be cognizant of that and, and manage positions. And so, um, yeah, I, I was buying a new, um, uh, not a new, a new, a and e, a new <laughs> uranium stocks and, and once more on pullbacks this week, sure. specifically um, energy fuels, which I think has a great setup. I don't know if you've read their last couple of press releases. Oh, not absolutely. To a, not to go on a tangent, but, um, you know, the, they're producing from their own assets. They're going to be yep. toll milling at their mill from from uh, other uranium ore in the in the southwest, and and they've got like a, a pipeline of 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 monsonite for for a rare earth supply that they say yep. can uh, satisfy like NDPR requirements for decades. And so, anyway, um, worth buying these uranium pullbacks and knowing where you are in the cycle. And it does look like it's shaping up to be a doozy. And so, make sure you're positioned in in, in those two things. Going I touched on right. the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, which we will both be attending. Uh, what are you looking for out there, Nick? What's got you curious enough to go brave the cold and uh, the many, many steps of walking and all the things that come with the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference in beautiful Vancouver, by the way? Well, it, that, it's in Vancouver. So that's the, the first thing, right? All the Most of the companies are there, right? The, 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 lots of mining companies are headquartered in Vancouver. And so you get all the... I'm executives in, in one place. That's the thing I, I look forward to the most, right, is um, the meetings on the sidelines, the the dinners where you get to chat with people and, and get the one-on-one -on -one updates. Um, there also seems to be a, a fair amount of subscribers there. I feel like I run into the most subscribers at, yeah. at this conference. And so um, it's always good to catch up with them. And then um, I like roaming the floor like you. I like seeing... Yep. Um, the, the new deals and, and catching up with the companies that I'm involved in. Um, I guess I'm interested in, in copper. I feel like, um, I'm, I'm well positioned in gold. Um, I'm well positioned in uranium and it, I do have a couple of copper juniors, but I feel like if there's one thing that's like on my radar that I'm looking for, it might be like some high quality, um, copper plays. So, uh, you'll be coming as well, and it'll only be your second time. And if I recall correctly, you showed up right at the end of the uh, the conference. I think that was last year. So what are you looking forward to? I'm uh, really experiencing it because I did show up right near the end of the conference um, last time. It was a great, you know, few hours, but definitely not, um, you know, didn't get the quality of time to actually be able to sit down. I think there was more networking, obviously, after the conference that we did privately. And then, you know, that led to some good introductions and conversations, but no, it, you know, a lot like you, everybody knows my favorite copper junior. I'm loaded up on that. I'm going to load up some more. Um, I, I think we're going to go on a five-year run as soon as we get some permits for that one. I think it's going to be Patriot like, so we'll see. But I, 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 I would love to hear um, new deals. I'm looking for new deals. I am looking forward to catching up with a lot of existing positions because I will be trimming quite a few positions this year. This is a year where I want to be really, really focused about quality over quantity, right? It's easy sometimes as someone, as somebody that writes checks and invests and speculates in this space and somebody who also writes a newsletter that recommends stocks that, you know, people pay for ideas and people don't like it when you don't keep offering them new ideas. The downside to that is one, as an individual, you can't buy everything. Two, Sometimes the quality gets lost in, you know, the 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 shuffle of new ideas. So I want to be really, really hyper focused on making sure that the companies that I'm speculating on have scale, have moat, have talented technical teams, and have done this before. I don't want to speculate on companies that, you know, don't have a technical team or just chasing a trend. Um, just want to market, you know, hoping that. It, it, the tide lifts all boats. I think those days in the resource space, especially the juniors, are past and behind us. And I don't think we're going to get <clears throat> the type of speculative capital that we've seen in past cycles, despite the fact that I think this would be the perfect cycle for that, right? I, I, I think people, it's going to take a lot for people to come back into the resource space. We had a, a, a cannabis sector that blew up. There was a lot of money that was lost during during that time. We had a Bitcoin and a crypto pullback where a lot of people that relate to that party blew up, right? And so there's a lot of speculative cap capital that's been destroyed. I don't think it's a coincidence that the venture exchange has one of its worst years ever as far as price action and volume goes. And I think it's going to take a lot to convince people to get off the sidelines. I think it happens eventually. I love, you know, you know me, Nick, I'm a contrarian. I love front running trends, right? And so it's, it's what's worked for me 
in my past. It's what works for me now. And I'm willing to be wrong for a little bit. Uh, if, 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 when, when, when I, if I'm proven to be right, if it's profitable enough, uh, to make the weight worthwhile, it also makes it easy to add to positions guys. Like, you know, we talk Patriot, we could talk Hannon, like all of these companies Hannon, and I'm, I'm still adding, you know, I'm going to continue to add. I, I have quite a bit. Right. And in two or three years time, hopefully somebody, you know, listens in on one of the episodes and then goes, Oh, he was talking about Hannon, you know, three years ago. And now they're out to four major discoveries and partnering with all these major companies and you know, all of that. Hopefully that's what happens. Doesn't always work that way, but that's it. That's how we did it with Patriot, right? We got in there early, uh, had some good conversations, figured out a good game plan, and you know knew the group that was behind the properties. Uh, Derouge Geological Consulting, which does a phenomenal job bending properties, bending properties, developing uh, properties uh, to partner, and then drilling them out. They get stuff done on budget and on time. You know, as as good as anyone in the business that I know. So I say all that to say that it's going to be a year to be a lot pickier. But I'm probably placing bigger bets this year on the companies that um, attract me enough to, to 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 write a check for. Sounds like a good resolution. I like it. I like it. What else were we talking about, Nick? I'm supposed to remind everybody every week to go to dailyprofitcycle.com forward slash subscribe for all of our talented editors, insights, picks, thoughts, free reports, including yours truly and Mr. Hodge. That is a completely free website with a ton of of hopefully useful information that you can use to further your own due diligence. So dailyprofitsciacode.com forward slash subscribe. Appreciate you sneaking that in there while I am loath sometimes <laughs> to <clears throat> discuss politics. I feel like we have to um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, sometimes they do play into to the investment landscape. Sure. Um, it, we, we've now just entered an election year, so... Um, there's that, and it's going to be a, a doozy if, if 2020 was um, any indication. We talk often about the um, fourth turning, and um, there's some implications there. Um, we talked earlier in this podcast about tribalism, for example. And so um, you also have a debt that's now at $34 trillion. You've got an Inflation <laughs> Reduction Act that is you know, starting to dole out its billions and billions of dollars. And so... Um, I'll, I'll admit and 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 be honest in that I have no idea who is going to to win. Um, I wouldn't vote for either of the presumed candidates right now. Uh, I don't know if they'll make it. Like I don't know if they'll be alive. I well, mean, I was going to. These make guys are in their late seventies and not yeah. in the best shape, right? Like I don't even know they'll make it to the election, which is the, the state of the world we're in right now. So I was going to mention a couple of things. One, the polls are, depending on which one you look at, pretty well even. I saw one this week that was 44%, 44%. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Trump was leading in a couple of polls. Uh, people really don't like Biden. Like his approval rating is um, the lowest it's been. People point to inflation. Um, what else? There's all the other things that are swirling around, you know, narratives, conspiracy or otherwise. They're going to Pull, they're going to pull Biden and he's not going to run because he's too old and it's going to be some other candidate like Michelle Obama or pick your thing or whatever it's going to be. He won't uh, know anyway. <laughs> like, well, so I, I wanted to get all my real things out before I started making jokes, but yeah. Man, Sorry, saw, you know me. <laughs> I saw him on New Year's Eve, like he gave his address to Ryan Seacrest or whatever on the screen on Times Square and he looks like a wax figure, man. I mean... It was it was bad. At one point, Joe was like straighten up, fucker. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like, and, and I wish him the best. Like, Listen, I don't know this guy. I I I don't care for either party. I I don't wish him any ill will. I wish him all of the best. But the gentleman looks real, and mm. th this is the leader of the free country, folks. And we're in the midst of two involved in two significant wars at a time where our debt is is at a, at a historic high. We need fresh leadership, y'all. So please don't take this as a partisan call for Trump or right. for Biden or against anyone. It's just facts, everybody. I mean, you can't see that with your own eyes. Something's wrong with you. Well, it's kind of what I was going to say. I was going to mention a couple of more things. I was going to mention, um, you know, part of the Democrat strategy seems to just be to keep Trump off the ballot, right? You've seen things come up in Colorado, uh, a couple Maine. of other ones, right? Yeah. Right, Maine. And now, you know, he's appealed to the Supreme Court. So we'll see where that goes. You've already got people tribal. I mean, you had people, you know, storm the Capitol on January 6th over the last election. So 
Um, these elections are meaningful, um, at least in the eyes of those who are partisan, which is a lot of folks. Um, and yet um, the fourth turning, according to the new book, is not going to be resolved until 2030 or, or 2032, which puts a few more presidential uh, elections um, in front of you. And so um, that's why it's been tough for me to figure out. Like, I don't know what it's going to be, but um, at the end of the day, I could see, um, you know, sleepy old Joe just sleeping in an office for another four years, right? Um, because inflation has come down enough, because employment is good enough, um, and just because of sort of the same things that happened in 2020, right? Um, I don't know. It, it, and, and yeah, I guess that's it, right? You're going to get the, the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, putting money in people's pockets and tax credits and employment and otherwise. And uh, he's in better shape than um, some former presidents were at this time in their reelection cycle. Like, you know, when Reagan was facing reelection, I'm pretty sure inflation was worse and unemployment was worse than it is now. Same with FDR. And yet uh, both of those presidents went on to, to win reelection and, 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 and you know what happened. So um, anyway, if I'm a betting man, I think I would have to bet that that Biden wins right now. Um, of course, there can be wild cards, et cetera. But um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Um. I, 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 I'm not being, you know, funny on this. I really don't know if either one of them make it to the really? election, right? Just health wise, um, the political climate, how tribal everyone is. I never, ever, ever, ever discount the fact that, you know, some crazy with, uh, you know, delusional um, thoughts and context, you know, does something. Uh, and, and, and I mean, we saw a guy try to, you know, ram Mr. Biden's uh, vehicle just a couple of weeks at, at, at the Capitol, right? As as he was leaving. So I don't know that either one of them make it to the polls. I know that this is probably the first year in a long time where I am just so agnostic about the polls. And I'm usually a pretty passionate voter. There's usually a couple of issues where I have enough faith that one of the candidates will at least improve on and then you know whether that's fixing our broken immigration system or whether that's you know could be any number of things i don't have faith in either one of these gentlemen and look to mr biden's credit he he the inflation reduction act i'm on board with it it's long overdue i just wrote a piece for daily private cycle about how china is you know the ultimate contrarian and how you know they're consolidating their rare earth uh, uh control for the second time in the last three decades they did this in the 90s um, when they bought the mountain pass mine and, you know, that was a, a move on the technology and now they're restricting the export of a lot of the technologies that are necessary to process some of these rare earths because they run the table on that. Right. And so there's, I've said this before, there's a cold war behind the scenes that's happening that I don't think very many people are aware of with China and the U S China positioning itself to be the next, you know, superpower um leading superpower they're they're not trying to be number two or number three and i just have so little faith in the political process right now that it's hard for me to get really excited about hitting the polls and casting a vote i almost feel like george carlin used to say he's one of my favorite comedians right of all time george carlin used to say don't encourage the bastards and I, I almost feel like George Garland right now. Like, is my vote really just going to encourage these people to continue on with what has been an, just a lack of leadership for the most part from both sides for decades, for decades? Yeah, I felt like that for a while. So um, I know we're <laughs> you were quicker to the party. <laughs> I know we're getting long in the tooth here, but uh, I will wrap up just on the fourth turning and relate it to, to, to some of what you just said. So um, yeah because I'm getting deep enough in the book now. So there's basically, it lays out one of three paths forward. So there's got to be um, a total, what the book calls an ekpyrosis, which is a Greek word for a total burned out, right? Yep. Of the institutions um, and then a reemergence. And there's three things that the book says could cause that from the 2028 to 2032 time period. One is financial, um, the, an outright recession or stock market crash that is bad enough to instigate change that, um, that makes people uh, unite against the institutions. That's one. 
Um, the other is a civil war. Um, it's not hard to imagine that given the what we just talked about, tribalism and, and some other things we've already seen in this country. Um, and then the third thing is a civil war. And some of these things uh, tie together, right? Because um, these civil wars and, and, and world wars or revolutionary wars are, are often blended, right? Like in the Civil War, we had help from you know, other countries, or Indians on both sides, Native Americans. Um, and in, in World Wars or in the Revolutionary War, same thing, right? Help from France, et cetera, because external countries see weaknesses and they want to make alliances, et cetera. So sure. anyway, um, those are the three paths forward. Financial crash, because something's got to instigate this burn down, right? Um, eh, financial crash, Civil War, um, Global War. Um, and obviously China, Russia, Iran, um, all those things are yeah. mounting. They're getting yep. increasingly close. They're coordinating increasingly together. Um, and it could be some combination of, of um, all three of those things. What escapes me um, is the spark, right? Mm. Because you never know what it's going to be, like some Pearl Harbor or assassination, as as you mentioned, or stock market crash or default or 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 or. And so... Anyway, I don't want to get too far off in the weeds, but those are the three paths that it outlines for um, the sort of what could cause that 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 final fourth turning um, to coalesce. So um, anyway, I don't think it happens yet is the last thing I wanted to say, which is why I think Sleepy Joe just can nap in office for another four years, because there's got to be some a new figure, some new ideas that come in that people sort of, you know, coalesce around. So I don't see that happening this year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, yeah, a, a lot there. And I know we're wrapping up. I'll just say this. So all my libertarian and Republican and Democratic friends, let, 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 let's try to be more civil and let's try to make sure it's not a civil war that breaks out. Um, I think that would be the most consequential um, spark. Right. And I, and I hope that of of the stock market crashing and there's always going to be war, unfortunately, because that's just how we're built as a society. But, mm -hmm. you know, a civil war is very different from a global war um, where militaries are involved and, you know, try to keep it mostly military, though clearly that's not what's happening around the world right now. Um, but I hope it's not civil war. And obviously, you know, I'm somewhat biased because that puts us directly in the crosshairs for this. Right. And, you know, I, I, I take that seriously. I have precautions in place, you know, in case something like that happens. But a lot of people don't. And sometimes you take all the precautions and, you know, you still get hit by a bus. So so um, many contingencies. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, folks, you know, whatever party you belong to, whatever your tribe is, whatever you feel, um, try to laugh more. Uh, try to be kinder to each other. Try to agree to disagree civilly. And then, you know, let's have healthy debates about all the things. But Let's try to not let it get too out of hand is my, uh, my, 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 my hope. Agree with that. <clears throat> That's it. Um, anything else, Mr. Hodge? I don't think so. Uh, say hi. If you're going to be in Vancouver on the 21st and 22nd in January, would love to see you there at the Vancouver resource investment conference. Um, and, and hopefully you're getting your financial house in order for the new year. And uh, we can help you in some capacity with that. Excited to do it. Uh, I'll do it till I'm super old and uh, even crazier than I am now. Um, cool. It's 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 been a fun, you know, 15 years at it, learning still to this day every day, and really excited for 2024. Again, I think it's going to be a profitable one, everybody. So stay tuned and buckle up. I'm Gerardo Del Real, along with Mr. Nick Hodge. This was the 251st episode of our weekly therapy session that we like to call investing in bizarro world send us off with some words of wisdom mr hodge oh adios no settle in for the new year and uh, get ready because uh, i don't think it's going to be any less volatile or weird than the one we just came from hey there you independent-minded investor if you like this video make sure to tell us so by clicking the like button below subscribe to our channel so you never miss another one and share it with everyone you know on social media you can also click the link in the description below to check out more information-packed videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.